We are. We're recording now. Got it. Welcome back, everyone. We got Sandcast, Beach Volleyball with Triborn, and our most popular and most regular guest. We got Trevor Crab, <laughs> Mr. Guarantee himself, and the champs. The Fort Lauderdale champs. Of course, you guys knew it before the tournament started. You celebrated a day early. And now you're still in Florida, just hanging out. Congrats, boys. Thanks, homie. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. It was uh, fun having you as part of the journey. It was fun being on the journey. I was... definitely, we definitely should have dropped a set. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. Appreciate that. Just the minor Chocahontas. <laughs> I was like that. Once we went down 1918, I was like, damn it. <laughs> you won a four or five point lead and then you're down one. It's it's over. By it, yeah, that it's one like, feels like like three at that point. Yeah. yeah, it might as well have been 10. It did make me feel better throughout the week watching every other team blow massive leads. Like oh, watching yeah. uh watching Hayden and Logan go up seven nothing in That's the quarterfinals cool. to the Taylors. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then we blew. We blew our first set lead against you and Kane. We were up 15 yeah. 10. They came back and tied it up at like 18 or something. So, that yeah. Was, yeah. It was across the board. Like, guys blew leads, girls blew leads. So, even though we did it first, I was like, all right, this makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. It didn't feel like it was that much good side, bad side no. necessarily. Yeah. But it was still a lot of runs for some reason. Yeah. Fort Lauderdale was funky. I've never seen a beach that like peaked its wind at nine in the morning and then slowly like came down from there. Yeah. yeah. And then as the, as the day goes on, you know, it gets hotter and then the wind dies down a little. So it uh, changes a little bit, but I mean, the conditions are pretty, pretty tough overall. You know, one of the tougher spots to play in, that's for sure. With the heat yeah. and wind. I thought it was a sweet spot though. I, I like them stopping in Fort Lauderdale. The spot's great. Yeah. No, for sure. We've had a, a few over my years. We've probably there's probably been like four or five events there between major series. Yeah, uh, the Cuervo was there when I first. That was my first AVP ever. Was oh, really? Given we just blitzed out there, lost <laughs> one match in the quali, and then just partied. <laughs> but no, I like Fort Lauderdale. I think it's a great stop, and you can tell the fans are a little more knowledgeable about volleyball and about us and uh they just kind of know who we are and you know yeah. like real volleyball fans out here in florida yeah i liked it especially you know compared to some of the other stops on tour i was like it's good to see fans mm -hmm. out there yeah. in the heat they showed up i, I was i was uh, pretty stoked on fort lauderdale yeah. yeah well it's nice when you got the beach there too so yeah up in the water and it's nice and good sand sand was nice so it's yeah moment. yeah well uh well, Trev, we, we got to talk about the guarantee. Mm -hmm. um, why why guarantee this one? Uh, especially because I think your your guys' last match in Espino is maybe some of the worst I'd seen you play uh, in your partnership. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, to guarantee brutal. it right after that, I was like, bold move. Yeah, that was <laughs> brutal. And we, we had just beat the match before that, Australia, so we were feeling pretty good. You know, we played pretty good and uh, – had a nice big win it was a close close game with them uh so we felt pretty good going into the italy game and then just shit hit the fans it's, <laughs> it was tragic i couldn't do anything right um and it's not like they played out of their minds they were just you know playing how they normally play and so that was that was pretty rough um but yeah i mean just uh just felt time to time to do that you know felt like the right time and like give us the extra little um, boost that we needed, Con whatever you want to call it, confidence boost or swag that we needed. Um, yeah. When you when you slap a guarantee down, do you feel extra pressure on yourself, or is it, or are you just like, all right, now's go time? Uh, so I do feel extra pressure, but not nearly as much as I did the first time I did it. Yeah. The first time it was a lot of pressure, um, and then the next two times there was a little less, but still, it still adds another element of pressure for sure. Um, but that you know can make you uh, that can either hurt you or it can make you focus in uh, more, and that's what it did for us. Yeah, well, I think I, I think you guys are a totally different team when you have a sense of urgency. 
I think right. like you can date that back to as far as 2019 world champs. Like when you guys were down 14, 11 to Andre and George, and all of a sudden you're a totally different team. Yeah. And then you go like Olympic qualifying Cancun, you guys could barely stand and you beat Jake and Taylor to stay in the race. Yeah. I mean, even in Hermosa, you guys go down like 14, 11 to Dietrich and Hagen find a way to keep the ball alive. And then against us, when you guys came out of the technical or not the technical, the timeout at 1814, and then try just Yahtzee's two aces is like, great. The <laughs> boys woke up. <laughs> How do you channel that sense of urgency? How do we channel it more often? That's the question. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, think, I think, think they're guaranteed now that probably produces a little bit. No, for sure. Uh, I mean, I think as you get later in your career too, where it's like, you just played so many matches you really have to like manufacture the pressure and the sense of urgency more and more. So I think if you get a little complacent with it in terms of just being focused and like energized about what, what you're doing there, then you can kind of just be there just to be there and see what happens mode. And then by the time, you know, by the time you snap out of it, sometimes it's too late. Yeah. And try when, when Trev throws down a guarantee, does he warn you before he does it? Or are you just like, oh, great. <laughs> well, we all we all hear it at the same time. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's a gnarly thing. So I kind of like it just because it's like, all right. I like to say that I, I'll rise up to the challenge, you know. I don't want to be the type of player that that um, gets crippled by that kind of thing. So I, I like the challenge. I think it's hilarious. So it's like, and now we know that they're spontaneous. They're not like he's thinking about it. Yeah. And like, you're, <laughs> We saw on the mic, it was just like, and another guarantee. <laughs> it was like, get quick, take the mic away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was no mic that maybe the Atlanta guarantee wasn't going to happen. <laughs> the mic made it happen. It was the Sherman here. The Sherman here. <laughs> that was one of the funniest post match interviews. It's hilarious to compare your guys post-match interviews with like a like a came and theo where theo's just sort of like making fun of himself the whole time you're like it was over before it started don't know why anybody even bothered showing up <laughs> <laughs> yeah i had to i had to get involved in that one a little he, he kind of teed me i up. liked it i liked it but i usually leave it to trev he didn't even show up to the our, our yeah our i wasn't party. there i wasn't there <laughs> it <laughs> sounded like a good one <laughs> it did sound good <laughs> but Caitlin and Theo showed up. Oh, did they? This guy was the only one that wasn't there in the finals. Really? <laughs> <laughs> How was the player party, though? Good for you guys for bringing him back. Yeah, it was uh, actually a good turnout. I mean, uh, a, a bunch of the players came, um, and then a bunch of fans uh, and locals just kind of showed up. It was, like, probably hunt, close to 100 people, like, kind of rolled through. Solid. Um, we had our own little private room, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, all, all thanks to Jess, the agent. So Jess, the agent. <laughs> wine, wine bar, wine, wine garden. There we go. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah. How late did, did people, did anybody who was still in it stay out late? Or did you just have a couple drinks and call it? Yes. I, oh, I left early. Um, so I don't know <laughs> how late the latest one was there. But, um, yeah, I, don't, I couldn't tell you that. Dude, we can we had Naya um, out pretty late the night before, and like she just wouldn't go to sleep. Really, we need to start bedtime at at least seven tonight so that she can get to sleep by nine. Yeah, in case she just doesn't want to go to sleep. I was like, if we get back, or if I get back late, it's just recipe for disaster. Yeah, at least you guys had a late late match on Sunday. He's out there. No uh yeah sunday you had a later time on sunday uh so you could sleep yeah. in even if you yeah, did exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's not me too. i was just like just any little bit of being more exhausted or dehydration for me i'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take it dude that uh, it it impacted people there a couple people have flown back out of california before atlanta which i think is kind of crazy and they're like taking a couple of days off because of heat exhaustion did you watch the women's finals uh the end of it dude so julia skulls in the middle of the technical timeout cameras on her just starts oh, puking yeah. everywhere oh, and what? the camera the camera just wouldn't turn away from her so she's throwing up like the whole technical timeout 
comes out. Set? Uh-huh. Second set. set. Second set. Second set. And they won the first. And they won the first. They're down like 12-9 in the second. So I'm thinking that Julia's probably just going to conserve some energy. Comes out like, hits three options in a row, still jump serving. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh. This is beast. Like, she's got like a heat, kind of like a heat stroke thing. Or... I think like heat exhaustion. Yeah. Get like oh. that dizziness, nausea. A lot of people got that in Atlantic City. Every, pretty much everyone who played pretty well or made it far in Atlantic City just shit the bed in Fort Lauderdale because everyone was just fried. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Or had blisters. Like Kelly Reeves is just starting to practice again because the blisters on her feet are starting to heal. <laughs> I wonder how many <laughs> sets we played compared to like the rest of the team since we didn't drop a set and we stayed in the winners. I mean, you guys played what, 10? Uh, 10, yep. yeah. And Cam and Theo only lost one set before you guys. Yeah. Right. So they, they played one, one extra set. Yeah. But if, if the Taylors had lost to Logan and Hyden, I, I don't think Logan would have been able to finish. Oh, dude. <laughs> he couldn't even stand up to uh, help his guy out for the fight. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting in the sand by the net, just looking <laughs> lost. It was pretty funny. I was like, I remember my hiding days when he would set me on two and my legs are gone already. Yeah. Like, wow. You might want to take this one, Hayden. <laughs> I was looking at the stats, and Logan had like 60 more attacks than anyone else going into Sunday. Yeah. In that heat. That's crazy. Yeah. Six nine guy. But since since the topic's up, Trev, if you want to shed a little light on the uh the shoving match between Hayden and and your brother at the end of that one. Well, Taylor, I mean, decided to, you know, go after a senior citizen. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not really a fair fight. You got the bug going against the senior citizen. Like, I don't know who's going to win that. Um, yeah, maybe he was just trying to be like big bro a little too much and talking a little too much trash. But yeah, because it, it, it initiated with Hayden and uh, Sander a little bit. I yeah. could actually hear it on the live stream. And then Bug was like, big brothering, big Taylor. Yeah, and, and Taylor, uh, Sander, he likes to talk a little bit too. So yeah, uh, that, that combo right there is uh, for, for Hayden, um, probably didn't go over so well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I love to see it. And I think a lot of the players loved it and even some fans too. Um, yeah. I think uh, Hayden's in the point of his career where he's like, obviously not winning all the matches he wants to or used to. And yeah, and he's just like, I'm not going to take any shit from these kids. Like <laughs> they can talk, but I'm talking back. <laughs> he's definitely at that point. And uh, I think it's hilarious. You said something to Hayden during our match too. And he called us in, he's like, you freaking in sync mother effers. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was just standing there laughing, standing there laughing. <laughs> oh, I love it because now, now when there's a rematch and there's definitely going to be a rematch, oh, that yeah. match has so much more intrigue now. So I love that there's a little trash talk. There's some rivalries forming on tour. Yeah. I think on the guys' side, like you guys and Cam and Theo are, are the best rivalry, um, just because like in terms of international race, you guys are one too. You guys always play against each other and all the AVPs. And now we got another one between the Taylors and Hyden and Logan, at least for the next couple events till Hyden bows out but yeah that's healthy we need it the sport needs when, it when's one of the girls gonna start getting chippy yeah we need it <laughs> well, it was crazy watching uh six out of the eight semifinalists went to usc yeah that's insane and then three out of the four in the finals uh lived together so tina haley and julia on their during their senior year at uh usc they all lived together they're all roommates it's like this is crazy so yeah, and then yet then he had Dane on the call, so he he didn't have to do any extra research for that one. Right, that's true. That's hilarious. But yeah, I think us Trojans. Seriously, it's taken over on the women's side. We didn't even have beach courts there when I was there. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, the college game has affected it, you know, majorly. Oh, in yeah. a good way. So yeah, it's- it was crazy to think that three out of the four in the finals were playing in college this year. Like that's how good college beach volleyball is. Right. Yeah, I'm glad that the guys don't have college beach volleyball. In that <laughs> <time>. <laughs> and then uh, Gina, 
back in a final. It's been a minute for her. It's it's fun to see her playing well again. Has she gotten one yet? She's been in a handful of finals. No, she hasn't won one yet. She's been in, I think, that's her third or fourth final. Yeah. That's rough. Have your partner thrown up after winning the first set. And still, she still played pretty dang good, too. That third set was tough, though. Yeah. Yeah. How, how's it feel for you guys to get back on top of the podium? There are no podiums on the AVP, but metaphorically, you're back on top. Yeah. It was pretty damn good. Uh, I mean, been playing for, like, how many years? We still only have a handful of wins. Yeah. Uh, we've been together like four years but now. I think. We also yeah. haven't played in many. If you think about yeah. it, yeah. Three, in like and, three in 2020, three in last year. So yeah. six in those two years of COVID or whatever. And then, yeah, I mean, we. it seems like it's been forever since we were back in the final, but it's only been technically, it was only two tournaments, Austin and Hermosa, since Chicago, which we were in the finals. And, yeah. You know, how many so, have we played in those three years? She played um, nine? We've only played in nine since. Oh, wow. So that makes three sound a lot better. So you've yeah. won 33% of the AVPs you've played together. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like Jake Gibbs, like, you know, 33 time winner, 34 time winner. Yeah. Like, it dude, helps whenever we year. haven't played in 34. And like, <laughs> <laughs> they were, he was playing an average of what, like 12 to 15 a year. And we yeah. Had, last couple of years, we've had three. Yeah. So that was that's and then I missed brutal. two years before that. Yeah. So percentage wise, you guys are pretty dang good. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> but no, you definitely want to get those AVP wins on your resume. So getting one now, still fairly early in the air. Like we're right before the halfway mark, I guess. Yeah. And what's uh, crazy is that the year's even longer now that they there's an AVP in December. I know. What the hell? <laughs> Take that's, a point. that's a bit weird. <laughs> That's a late uh, one. I'm going to be fresh off some Pokeballs into that one. Well, I was yeah. wondering, are you guys going to try to yeah. do all the November? Uh, yeah, World tournaments? Yeah. yeah, I don't think we know. Get through the AVPs first. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say because all the we'll teams are going to do first. like the Rio, the Cape Town, Australia, Australia. They, they'd be like thriving. That's such a gnarly schedule. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be crazy. Travel wise. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked that my birthday weekend opened up now. No more Atlantic City, so we can just go to Vegas now. <laughs> you go to the real Atlantic City yeah. to Vegas. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's pretty unanimous that the players are probably stoked that there's no more Atlantic City. Yeah, I just don't. I'm just kind of upset that it's that far late. You know, why not just have it like October or something? Yeah. Nothing else, but whatever. Yeah, well, Florida, I feel like it wanted to take a minute to get the sponsors ready or like to get any sponsors like for an event in October just to set it up. But at least Florida's a sweet spot. I'm glad they're having another spot there, even if it yeah, is. That, that, that time of year isn't too hot there either. I played that. We both, well, you showed up and got COVID and couldn't play. But <laughs> <laughs> being at the beach there. Like, Tough history. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so now we have uh, more weirdness on our schedule because the ABP finals is before the last event. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I don't know what that's going to be called or like the prestige of that one now. But yeah, it's and, like and the ABP uh, player banquet party will be a Christmas party now. <laughs> <laughs> or before the last event. <laughs> Yeah. If they even have it. Yeah. It's a scramble. The whole year is a scramble. Yeah. Were you guys like, were you at all concerned with how the year had gone up to this point? Or did you know that like it was sort of a matter of time before things started getting going in the right direction again? Um, we, I mean, we both had talked about it um, and kind of both felt like it was, a matter of time kind of thing but it you know it, it gets a little nerve-wracking when it's taking longer than you think or thought yeah. and whatnot um but yeah definitely we're looking at it like all right when's it gonna click um but now it's like it clicked but you gotta maintain it you know you don't want it to click back or anything so just kind of staying in that same zone where we're at and trying to maintain would yeah. you say that? Go ahead, Jeff. 
I was going to say, I think obviously our coaching change had a big uh, factor. Yeah. It's more than we thought it was going to have. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're just Jose and Landro. Obviously, Landro was working with us before as our assistant, but as a head coach, you know, it's totally different. And they're two totally different kind of styles of coaching, you know? Um, so just having to buy into a new style and kind of get used to that was a, a big change. And, um, yeah, and then not having uh, a coach on the road for all those international events was, was tough. Um, but, but, yeah, it's it's going great now, obviously. Yeah. Would you say, is Fort Lauderdale, you think, the best you've played in a tournament? Or do you think Manhattan or even, I mean, World Champs 2019, I thought you guys played pretty dang good. Yeah, World well, Champs, we think, played pretty good. I don't think it was like, wow, we're playing the best volleyball ever. We were just yeah. kind of like grinding it out more than any team. Yeah. It wasn't like some insane, like, wow, this is like action kind of yeah. vibe. I think I played the best uh, with Reed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Reed. 2019. The <laughs> one time he didn't play with me, he played well. <laughs> <laughs> you would have to do it. <laughs> oh, here, though. Just like the honeymoon phase of Reed. Where yeah. Just, was just kind of... <laughs> yeah, who else was played oh yeah like uh yeah the honeymoon thing is for real like and you can look at andy and phil oh for you sure know? and then even casey and phil it's like a big factor that i was just coming with a new guy and having like zero expectations and no one knows your style yet your playing style you're still trying to figure it out yeah and you guys won the first tournament you ever played together right yeah. out in kinjo yeah and then, exactly yeah and then fourth in vegas so the honeymoon it's real yeah do you think that winning almost puts you back in like a honeymoon type mindset where it's just like, we're cruising now? Um, maybe a, a version of it. Yeah. I don't know. Honeymoon's phase is a little different. Uh, Cause there's just no pressure and you're also trying to figure out a lot of stuff and not really like judging anything that's not right or perfect. Whereas like, now we like have a plan in place and we want to do things a certain way. And obviously you're not trying to judge yourself and be too perfect, but we have more like, we have a lot more intention than a, a new team at this point. Yeah. And I think like Trev said, it, to me, a lot of it comes down to the new coaching. This is the first event where I really could hear Leandro and like be in my zone, but also execute on what he was telling us and like trusting it. Uh, we literally haven't had him at practice before this previous few weeks. And then Hermosa was the first time without many practices. And he, as an assistant, he's quiet. Like he's a really good assistant to Jose and does everything he wants. Now it's just completely different. And, uh, in Fort Lauderdale, it was the first time like he really like seemed like he was very confident and um, it was just easy to listen to him. Yeah. I feel like it's a tough spot for Leandro because – he probably doesn't want to try to be Jose, even though he'd been working he with Jose for so long. He doesn't, uh, he can't emulate Jose. No, he yeah. Tried to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I'm even like, I think I've told Leandro too, like, yeah, like it can be louder or yell at us more, but yeah, it's, it's, it's he not, it's not the same. He doesn't yell. <laughs> <laughs> That's good that you've like kind of settled in with Leandro because Jose was such a good coach for you guys. I think, you know, I don't think like Leandro and Jose are all that different in terms of like their way they run a practice, but their energy is so crazy different. Like Jose is just like constantly yelling and screaming. He's like dripping sweat in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Leandro's a little more cerebral, you know, and, yeah. Um, less energy. He sees the game really, he's really smart. Like, I don't know if, I don't know if I had a coach that sees it quite as like strategically well as him. Yeah. Maybe, he was really smart in his own way too, but just everyone's just different. It's, it's pretty cool to study new coaches um, and whatnot. Yeah. Well, try this is like the first year, one of the first and only years of your entire beach career that you haven't, it's not Olympic qualifying. Yeah. Have you felt like any, like pressure lift or is this like is it any more relaxed than before where you're like okay we can pump the brakes 
not every tournament is crazy important. Yeah, I didn't think about it too much. Uh, we definitely had a intention to like enjoy things a little more this year. And I think, you know, it's possible that maybe that um, had a little bit to do with like slow start to the year. Just like, all right, let's just see what happens and have fun with it. Whereas like the last few years, it's just like intense, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sense of urgency, like you said. And then showing up to events, whereas like this whole point thing and the money's not that high. And it just, yeah, it was, I think it was harder to get into the sense of urgency when like last year we're playing for Manhattan and I, I went to the Olympics. Like it was just like, you know, Cancun was insane pressure. Every time we stepped in the yeah. court, it was insane. Uh, so the sense of urgency, you kind of just like a little more numb when you walk out. And, um, but I think I've snapped out of that. But yeah, because now, now it's like embarrassing, you know, like when you're playing so much below, below the level where you think you belong and should be playing, it's like now I do have a sense of urgency because <laughs> something's on the line, you know, your season's right. on the line. Yeah. And so you want to snap out of it early. And luckily, we're still early in the AVP season. Yeah. It's not the third and seventh's like all that bad, but right. We don't like sevens, that's for sure. Right. And it's crazy that it's August and we're early in the AVP season. That's a little that's so different from years past. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it is weird. It's just every year it's been different. Literally, there's never been yeah. like just the tours. We know what's going to happen and when we're going to play. Yeah. It's just not yeah. a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are, you're in Florida right now and heading up to Atlanta. Now, Trev, now the, the emotions of winning they're they're gone a little bit are you doubling down on your on your guarantee that you gave to mark shewerman you're gonna back oh, yeah. off a little bit i never back out on a bit <laughs> <laughs> i love it unless unless i'm in vegas and uh my bet's on the table and i can still move it Atlanta, <laughs> 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 hey, that'll be a good one i mean gold series yeah yeah, now nah, we're starting the gold series. So sense of urgency. I mean, these three events are back to back to back and they are, they will dictate the season really. Um, and definitely the Phoenix event. Yeah. Do you guys like, I mean, you guys are confident, pretty confident players as it is, but does winning, did that like sort of return you to your normal level of confidence or is it like, are you back even higher than before? I think winning always, you know, improves confidence no matter what. Um, you know, whether it's a like winning at a lower level event or even a higher, a big event, uh, winning can just, you know, help change things in the better direction um, in terms of like, you know, just your mindset. Um, so, yeah, you always, winning is just, uh, winning is a lot better than losing. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think anything changed like on the court about your guys' games or was it more of like a mental thing that, that clicked? I mean, we did change a few things like, uh, like our offense a little bit, yeah. um, some defensive <laughs> schemes. Um, so I think it was a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Seemed to work out for the best. Things are coming together. It's good to see you boys back on top. Even if, uh, you had to roll over me to start it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't want that to be uh, the topic of conversation. <laughs> and then every fan episode, they keep asking questions about it. You may be making an alias and throwing some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we didn't want to lose to a writer on a plumber. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do it. It was a fun match, though. I was glad it was at least like a, a, a good show. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully I'll see you guys again in Manhattan. Yeah, exactly. What's on your schedule? Uh, nothing. I'm skipping Seaside, commentating Hamburg instead, because um, Seaside's far. It's expensive, and that was my so that was my 18th tournament of the year, Fort Lauderdale, and my sixth straight. So I was like, I'm going to take a time out yeah, <laughs> till, yeah. till Manhattan. So it's Manhattan, and then uh, Virginia Beach, um, and then. Well, nothing in, <laughs> nothing till um, Florida. Oh, you can't, no, you can't get in Chicago because that's right. Because oh, Seaside's okay. the qualifier. Oh, got it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Laguna, you, Laguna Beach. 
You play? Oh, I, I forgot about Laguna. When is Laguna? Do you know? The week after Chicago. Okay. Probably play Laguna then. Yeah. Are you guys doing Laguna? I want to. I just looked at it now that. I mean, I've already won it, so. <laughs> yeah, I've won it too. <laughs> won it. Oh. Won it. The, the tournament's yeah. already over. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's over it's going to be more of like a golf outing at the ranch and then just go play down, spend some time down there. That is fun. That would be a good time to do uh to do our little series. Um if the Taylors are gonna play, me, you, Creams, the Taylors, get a little golf match in, a little Laguna in. Yeah. Maybe you make a bet that combines the golf and the volleyball. Yep. Now we're you're, talking. Your aggregate from the two. Yeah. yeah. So I got sets one, holes one. Now we're talking. Well, we'll we'll fine tune that before it comes up. There we go. Good stuff. Good stuff, boys. Well, congrats again on the win. Trev, I know you wanted to keep it nice and short and sweet. So short and sweet it is. Got for a little really. Brazilian short barbecue on the grill right now. My oh, out of boy. Go get some of that picanha. Yep, exactly. All right, well, go get a guaranteed win number two in Atlanta. I'll be watching from afar. Actually, no, I'll be playing my first six man. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Well, Setting for Rosie. Watching. You'll be watching from Shellback. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah good stuff all right guys good catching up yeah we'll see you on the victory podcast next week next week it is all right (laughs) later Later, money shoots boys shoots